You are listening to the Animal Farm on the We the People Radio Network. Number to call in five one two six four six nineteen eighty four. Uh, we are talking to Jason Burmeson. I do. I I, I, just, I want to say something. Wait, let me let me say something. Go ahead, Burmy. You're doing a heck of a job. You're doing a heck of a job, Burmy. <laughs> you're doing a heck of a job. Well, oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I mean, no, really, in all seriousness, I mean, you guys have obviously broken so much ground, and we certainly wouldn't be where we are today if it hadn't been for loose change and just the huge success following that. But, you know, and I want to continue to talk about action. You know, we, we I think we hit upon something real important before, and I, I do, I'll play the Silverstein clip just for people in case they haven't heard it 150,000 yes, times. What we do on the show is we pretend that nobody has ever heard this stuff before, so we play it as if it's it's a brand new thing for people listening. Yeah, just in case no one's heard it, you know, this whole new NIST report, I want to play the the... the the documentary uh, Re America Rebuilds, correct? That's the name of it? Yes. Uh, where Silverstein basically admitted that he gave an order to pull Building 7 and then they watched it collapse. Listen to this and then we'll comment and I have a couple ideas. World Trade Center 7 had always been considered the starting point for rebuilding. Located north of the slurry wall, 7 had been cleared faster than the rest of the site. And there had been no bodies to recover. by debris when the North Tower collapsed. Seven burned until late afternoon, allowing occupants to evacuate to safety. I remember getting a call from the uh, fire department commander telling me that they were not sure they were going to be able to contain the fire. I said, you know, we've had such a terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull. And then we watched the building collapse. Okay, so there's the obvious clip. And, of course, afterwards you hear about how they, how they pulled six and how pull really needs to demolish. So we've been over this a hundred times. And, I mean, it's so sad. I actually talked to a denier once, and I showed him this clip, and he couldn't explain it. So he just said that they dubbed the voice in, that he wasn't actually saying that. So <laughs> it, it, it gets ridiculous lengths. And, Jason, I'm sure you have your, your much greater stories than I do or I ever could for that matter. But I'll, I'll say one thing. Now that this new report came out, what I would say, maybe what I'll try to do, because we do have pretty great video capability here at the Animal Farm, maybe I'll start coming out with maybe like the top five or top ten things to know about Building 7 other than what this NIST report is talking about. For example, the countdown the BBC report, like we just heard with the Silverstein thing. Mm -hmm. There's just way too many other questions besides just the structural and the physical damage part of the collapse. So, you know, maybe it's time to get on the, the horse there and start getting another viral video going. This way people cannot consider this whole subject debunked. Because once they do, then the whole 9-11 conspiracy theories go out the window. Your thoughts, Jason? Well, first of all, Larry Silverstein saying that he uh, made the decision to pull uh, he later backtracked and said, well, that meant pull the firefighters out. But then we yeah. find out that that comment came in late afternoon and all the firefighters were gone. Now, if you watch that disgusting BBC piece that came on, uh, Chief Daniel Nigro, when he was asked about the pull it comment, he said, look, uh, Larry Silverstein would have never had any authority to make any decision on what I did with my firefighters. So even Nigro disagrees with Larry Silverstein's uh, explanation of the pull it comment. You know, anybody with half a brain can figure out he, he slipped up, he talked about the, demo, the, uh, the deliberate demolishing of that building, and he was well aware of it. You know, that guy's hands are dirty, period. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more, I'm but sorry, Jason, I, 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 I want to get your thoughts. I, yeah, I miss you should be embarrassed, but I want to get your thoughts too, Jason. And then one other thing that's come up that basically has turned me uh, almost to vomit is when people say, well, they always put these buildings up with demolitions already in them, so in case they ever have to bring them down. So the idea is, oh, well, these, you know, these demolitions uh, charges were planted you know, years and years ago, because that's what they do with all federal buildings. Jason, have you, have you heard that, or can you comment on that? Can yeah, you know, I, I've heard it. I mean, there, show me some evidence for it. I mean, is it a possibility? Sure. Is it a probability? Sure. Probably not. You know, I mean, it, it's absolutely possible, but I want to know why you think that you would uh, rig a building up to be demolished with, you know, high-level explosives Just say something else went wrong. What if, a, you know, what if a diesel fuel oil tank does explode? What if the power goes out? Or what if you have a, uh, an energy burst? You know, you could, ha you could set one of these explosives off by accident. So, I, you know, that really doesn't fly with me. I, it really looks like me. If there was a contingency plan and they were built with explosives already in them, well, it was done by our intelligence agencies because they were the, the main residents of those buildings. 
Yeah, no doubt. 512-646-1984. Folks, if you want to talk to Jason Burmis, you only have about six minutes and 40 seconds left for the show. And, uh, of course, we can talk about the subject to a blue in the face and, and only scratch the surface of the entire day. And, I mean, look, Jason, I mean, you're the last person I have to tell, but just with the Pentagon and then with Flight 93 and all the other questions that are uh, that need to be answered, frankly, and need, needed to be answered the day afterwards and still to this day have not been answered, it just seems like we may never really get the, the full story or at least be able to agree on the actual cause and effect of these events so um, you know anything else in the future any other plans to uncover more about 9-11 or is it just uh, well, more movies you know I mean uh, my next movie hopefully is going to be a project I've been planning on doing for quite a while now called Invisible Empire Beyond the Veil and really I want this to be the definitive New World Order movie I've gone through a lot of the archives and I have a ton of cue list footage it's probably going to cost me anywhere between five and ten grand to get it but you name it I've got them on camera referring to the new world order you know the one that doesn't exist and we're mm -hmm. talking you know the Bushes the Clintons Jesse Jackson um, I've got Bohemian Grove footage from 1981 uh, they have the annal here they have the list of names I found Willie Brown in the annals here the other day. Really? Yeah, I thought that was kind of funny. Back in 93, he was up there speaking. And uh, we all know that Willie Brown got that low-key warning, tried to deny yep. it on camera, and then the guy presented the article. <laughs> and he's like, he just didn't want to talk about it. So, <laughs> you know, I, I, I think I need to put out a movie um, that does for global government, a.k.a. the New World Order, what Loose Change did for 9-11, at least to create some kind of a public awareness so that when I bring up the term New World Order, I'm not just immediately discredited. I mean, you can have the Georgian president go on Glenn Beck and literally say that Russia is against the New World Order, and you can have Gordon Brown, you know, the head of the U.K., go on numerous television shows uh, before and after him uh, being elected saying, you know, we, we've got to be part of this New World Order, and we need the United Kingdom to be strong in this New World Order, and people will still deny that the term means anything. It is about globalization. It is about these elite power brokers uh, gaining more and more control over our lives. And I, I just got to expose it, man. I don't want to grow up in this slave-like technocracy. You know, it's not cool. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's the reason why we all do what we do and yeah. uh, we try to put the information out there. I mean, we we all know that we have Bush 41 and his presidential speech basically talking about the New World Order, George saying by a word. So I've, I've never actually heard anybody deny the existence of a New World Order. I'd probably I'd probably uh, piss my pants if I heard that. Well, but, you know, Bush Senior, that, but... on, on September 11th, Bush Sr. said it. He's his own words. We could start a new, yeah. new World Order. We have it in the beginning of our show. <laughs> yeah, but I do think, you know, the, the movie that woke me up and I think uh, woke you up uh, the same was the 9-11 um, movie. The movie that Alex Jones came out Martial with. Martial Law? Uh, no, it wasn't Martial Law. It was uh, Night Level Road, Road to Tyranny, which was uh, utterly disturbing and introduced me yeah. to the New World Order and, and all the things about 9-11 and Oklahoma City and the false flag attacks. So it, it, it'd be great to get another uh, one of these movies. And, and you're going to start working on that after this one or depending uh, on this? I am done with this one. I mean, I've been wrapped up now for about two weeks. It's all about encoding and making sure that the discs are checked and everything else. And I had actually started the New World Order film uh, before this movie i was just making an extras disc uh for loose change final cut in the beginning but i had had so much stuff that jones convinced me to put it into a narrative and then he brought me out here to make it you know without him this film probably wouldn't have been made it probably would just be an extras disc that had half the information wasn't put into a narrative type situation uh but now that i've done this one it's full steam ahead on the next one like i said i've already collected a lot of footage I just have to pay for a lot more of it, <laughs> and then I have to, uh, you know, edit it down and write a script, man. Yeah. Folks, we are talking to Jason Burmis. Um, his new film that's coming out, Fabled Enemies, um, is, is supposedly going to be, be great. should be coming out, uh, well, within 10 days is when it's scheduled, but probably beforehand. Jason, let us know if we can do anything to help you pimp this film, if we can um, put some type of affiliate program together or anything to... Uh, to help you uh, sell this film, it seems like a very important film, and uh, just by looking at the trailers, contains more information than than I even know about, and uh, you know new things that I hadn't even heard to begin with. So I'm looking forward to it a lot. Awesome, man. You know that's what it's about. It's it's hopefully going to be able to bring new people in, and still going to be uh, very lively for those that are aware of the issues. You know, it brings up a ton of things from you know United 23 that nobody ever talks about. And for those that don't know, that's the other plane that should have been hijacked that day where four guys got on the plane, refused to get off, 
And then when they did get off, they left their luggage, and lo and behold, their luggage contained the same thing that Magical Muhammad Atta's luggage contained. Uh, Korans, uh, yeah, all these, all these crazy flight manuals. And guess what? The FBI just couldn't find out who it was because they used false identification. What do you know? Yeah. What a coincidence. I tell you, talk about a day of coincidence. It's unbelievable. Um, unbelievable. One more time, Jason, just just uh, tell us where we can see the film. One more time, pimp it out, and then we're going to let you go. All right, man. You can go to Infowars.com and order it right now. We're taking pre-orders. They'll ship out on September 1st. And, of course, you can watch it in DVD quality. you got a nice Philips uh, DVD player that plays DivX. I pimp the Philips ones because they have the little USB thing. They play almost every file format. You can just download it on August 31st when we launch it throw it right on the DVD player and show it to all your friends. So it's a very exciting time. We can get this information out quicker than ever, and I hope everybody does that. That's great. Jason, thanks so much for joining us. white women and black men. And then for sure, Jason, we're going to definitely have to have you back on after we see the film, and we'll get some uh, some clips together. We'll really kind of dissect it. So great work, yes. as always. Thanks so much for joining us on the farm, and we'll definitely speak to you soon. All right, thanks, guys.